gonna do this little project, make this kitchen look a little bit better. It's a nice looking kitchen already, but I think sometimes you add a little splash of trim here and there. It kinda dresses it up just a little bit. difference in the world and it doesn't have to be fancy doesn't have to be extravagant just some pieces of trim can just change it all together here's a good example right here got a kitchen bar top and the front of it it looks good it also seems to be missing something so I'm gonna go ahead and add a few pieces of trim along the top along the bottom trim out the corner and then put a couple horizontal pieces and I think it's going to make a big difference. It's going to kind of finish the kitchen kind of the way it should have looked from the very beginning. We're going to see how this project goes today. I'll walk you through the steps. Pretty easy stuff. Thank you for coming to the channel. That's LAF Space Film Fest. Capital LAF Space Film Fest. One of the first things I need to do is this has a little corner bead on it and I need to remove it because my corner is going to be a piece of flat stock and a piece of flat stock and they're going to come together and form a new corner right here. So I want to remove this one right here. You never really know how something was put together. You can try it. What I did right there is Put a chisel in there and thought maybe it might want to pop out. It seems to be stuck pretty good, so I've got another technique in mind. When you do construction, you do a remodel project like this, you want to surgically remove things. You just don't want to start tearing stuff up and slamming them and knocking things. I just want to make as little damage as possible taking this off so when I put everything back together, I don't have to fix maybe what got broke when I was taking it off. So what I'm gonna try to do here is I'm gonna take a little nail punch, take the nails that are on there, and I'm just gonna drive them on through the wood. Pushing them on through. I'm gonna see now if that made a difference. Yeah, there we go. There we go. You know, I've trimmed out cabinets and stuff before, so I figured they probably put a few finished nails in there just to hold this corner bead. And sure enough, there it comes right off. So that's good. That's a good start to the project right there. Piece of cove mode's got to come off. Going to do the same thing. Going to drive the nails through. <laughs> Cut this little bead of caulk right here. All projects will have variables. Some are easy, but then every once in a while something gets thrown in there. Now I got to deal with this. Well, here's one of those little monkey wrenches right here. Got an outlet mounted on this bar. Now the idea was to take the trim and just trim it at the top, trim it at the bottom, fill in the pieces and be done. But because this outlet is here, now I've got to think about how to make this outlet work out with my trim. It would be nice if this would have been higher, I could have just cut my trim out and laid it in the trim. But because it's lower, I'll cut the trim out so the outlet will sit on the trim. But here at the bottom, I'm gonna to have to come up with a piece of probably just 22.5, bring a piece over and then come back up and it's just gonna to have to drop down around the outlet. One of those deals, things come up like that, you just have to deal with them. It's the way it goes. Construction. Don't do a project if you're not willing to accept challenges that come up, deal with them, figure them out, and get it right. You'll become frustrated if you don't have patience to do that. 
So one thing you want to do is if you have a work around something like this is first of all shut the power off to the electric because you will get shocked no matter if you think you can work around it and not get shocked eventually your fingers are going to get in there a tool is going to get in there and cause a spark and it's probably going to shock so go ahead and go to the breaker box usually in the garage and shut the power off make sure the power is shut off what i've done is i made me a cutout for the saber saw now what i like to do is I don't like to precision cut my pieces until I know everything is going to fit. So in a case like this, I'll put it back in there. Looks like the box is going to fit. If you notice right here, I've ran it long. I've got a couple inches sticking past here because I don't want to make that final cut yet. I wanted to make sure everything else was going to work. So that's looking pretty good. Always a good idea to pre-drill your hose before you put your nail. A lot of times I won't drive that nail all the way in until I know everything is exactly the way I want it. Then I'll drive them in and set them. Just in case I've got to make some adjustments. What I'm doing is just wrapping this corner. So this is some pretty old school technique here. Most of your carpenters these days, I'm trim carpenters, I'm sure have battery operated nail guns. But if you don't have all that and you got a hammer and a nail punch, this is how you'll do it. Corners turning out pretty good. This piece turned out pretty nice. Electrical socket will go back in. May still have to come up with a piece of trim underneath here. I'll just have to see how that looks once it's all finished. It's looking pretty good. Now I apologize. I'm not showing you how I'm making all these cuts because believe you me, when it comes to trim work, to me trim work is like the pinnacle of carpentry because framing, got to really be good at framing to do rafters to do floor systems oh if you look at all the buildings that are framed it's just amazing the craftsmen out there and the skill when it comes to trim work it's like this is where you really got to get precise the compound miters like the cobalt i have out in the garage there's a reason that they'll shift left and right and they'll also tilt sometimes in order to make these cuts it's unbelievable the, the amount of technique that I'm using. It wouldn't be right to call it tricks. When you're in the carpentry business forever, you learn there's all kind of things that you can do with that saw and a piece of wood to make it fit. Because if you just put it on a 45 or, or 90 degrees and you think everything's gonna go together, it won't. There's all kind of techniques using it. It would take forever just to show you everything that I'm doing, so. see right there precision work I will actually mark the piece where it needs to be and when I make my little mark there I'll actually put a tiny little X on the piece that I'm gonna keep and that way there I know what side of the line to cut on and I know what piece I need to take in and put on the wall. Uh, even with the laser, I still start a little bit beyond, work my way to it, because the kind of work that I'm doing here with trim work anyways. Now trim work has to be precise. That's the best way i found to do it. So here's 
here's a little secret here. I now have to put this long piece on, which is gonna go from this board all the way to the other end. Now, the one thing I could do is take that measurement, whatever it is, go out there and cut it, bring it back in, and put it in place. But what I found out through years of experience is this may not be a complete 90 degree angle where these two pieces will meet. And the same goes on this side back here. It may not be a true 90. So what I'll do is I'll take a piece, a shorter piece, I'll make sure, put it on the miter saw and make sure it's an exact 90 degree cut on both sides. Then I'll bring it back in, I'll lay it up there and I'll test each side. So this one here, I'll come up against and look at it and it looks to me like it is a little bit off. There's a little bit of a gap at the top. Now that's why I don't go out and just cut them, bring them back in and put them in. Now if you're jamming trim and you're working on houses and you know this is going to be painted, you don't really care because the painter is going to come in and caulk it anyways and you probably don't bother with this. If you're doing precision work and you want it to be right as much as possible, then you take the time to do little things like this. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. Here's my vertical piece going up and down on the corner. Slide it up against there. I can see there's a little bit of gap at the top compared to the bottom. The bottom is hitting, the top is open just a little bit. When I went out and I set my saw on about a half a degree off, set it back up there, slide it in. I like that a lot better. I can see it's even from top to bottom. So that's the precision cuts that you have to make if you want things to really turn out nice. And that's the same as if I was doing a 45 degree angle here. You always want to use a smaller piece. Make sure you know exactly what that angle or that joint's going to be. And now I'll go in and I'll take the longer piece and I'll actually cut this angle on the longer piece that I'll use. I'll figure out what the other side is and then I'll cut it, and then I'll bring my long piece that'll fit, and it'll go right into place. Of course, it really helps in your trim work if you learn to read your tape measure. Guys, I will measure things definitely to the 16th of an inch, and a lot of times I'll go beyond that to a 32nd of an inch. That's how precise that you gotta be, especially if it's trim work that's not gonna be painted. In a case like this right here in this kitchen, I am going to paint this trim, so I have a little bit of room to wiggle, but if you're gonna stain it, there's you don't don't really want to put like a brown putty in stained woodwork. You want your joints to fit tight and then you stain them. Even though it's going to be painted, I still put it together as precise as if it was a clear piece of oak that I'm trimming out on a doorway. Okay, so now I have my framework done. I want to make this three equal panels and I'll show you how I figure that out. Another thing I'd like to mention, when you're doing a project like this, I don't have any music on, anybody around me. It takes a lot of concentration to be able to do this kind of work. Even the cuts that I make, I got to remember when I walk back out to the saw, if, especially if I'm varying that cut a little bit, a degree or a half a degree one way or the other, I got to remember each time to go out there, which side of the wood I need to cut on. Do I need to cut on the top? Do I need to cut it on the bottom? Which way the angle will take some wood off? I have to remember then not keep my saw set on that off angle because it's very easy to get one piece cut. You're thinking, okay, that went well. Now I'm going to try another piece. Go ahead and cut it, bring it in, and it's off. And it's like, boy, that's weird. Well, it's because my saw is still set at that off angle. It gets a little bit complicated, it but it all comes down to concentration. You gotta almost get into a zone and figure out how you want it all to lay out and how you want it all to work. That's how you come up with a real nice trim job. So it's a little bit of a mathematical problem. How do I make three equal panels on the back of the bar? The easiest way that you can do it, especially these days with our phones, is you go to your calculator. I know the distance between this corner and that corner. Inside distance is 67 inches. So I'm gonna put in here 67. I'm gonna have two pieces of trim, one 
and two. These trim pieces are three and five sixteenths. Now I have two of them. So three and three is six. And then what I do is I take a five sixteenths. Well, let's just make that a quarter. So a quarter and a quarter is a half. Then that leaves me a sixteenth. So a sixteenth and a sixteenth would be five eighths. So six and five eighths, but I'm gonna go ahead and round that to three quarters for simplicity. Six and three quarters is approximate width of two pieces, and I have to calculate that in the equation if I want three equal panels. Okay, so I have my distance going across is 67. Now I wanna subtract my 6.75 because those pieces are gonna be put in there, so you have to subtract it from the total distance. So that gives me 60.25. So if I take 60.25 and I divide it by three equal panels, that's gonna give me 20 inches for each panel plus a little bit extra. So I'm calculating that's gonna come out about 20 and 1 8 inches between each panel. I apologize for the arithmetic. There are probably mathematic geniuses that are looking at this going, there's an easier way, but this is the way I figure it out. And it comes out okay. And I come over 20 and an eighth. That's my mark right there, 20 and an eighth. And I take my piece, trim. I'm just gonna lay it right there. I'm gonna go 20 and an eighth from this side, and there's my mark. So I put my piece of trim right there. Let's see what we have in between the two, one in an eighth. So that's how you do it. It slides right into place. And that's exactly how you want it to go. Okay, so there we go. Looks a lot better. It's amazing what a little bit of trim will do. That was a blank spot, and now you actually have three panels looks pretty nice. So if you decide to take on a project like this, just make sure you have good tools. Make sure the blade in your saw is super sharp. That way you can make those little slices. If you have to take just a little bit off and that edge will be just razor sharp. I appreciate you coming by the channel. That's LAF Space Film Fest. That's capital LAF Space Film Fest. On to the next project. Everybody needs little projects done. You become a pretty popular person in the home maintenance department. I hope you have a good day.